Finally, we can get started with the programming. Now I'm going to say right off the bat, this section I really want to focus on programming. And so we're not really going to be working on like fancy animations for the switches or the, the arms. Uh, that's going to be at the end of the course. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to go and focus in on the Blueprint folder. We already have this BP switch opened. If not, make sure and click it. Okay, and let's see. For now, I'm going to get rid of this one. Let's see, we come back to event tech later. Get rid of that. Uh, and we need event to begin play. I guess not. Okay, uh, let's go into a viewport. Let's add in our meshes. So let's add in the static mesh. So this is going to be the switch base. Okay, and you'll see there's a bunch of stuff we don't need. So that's going to be part of the engine content. So hide that by doing that. And then let's take our switch base. Okay, this is very small. I think that's fine. Uh, and then let's add in another one, static mesh. Uh, can be parented, that's fine. Just call it switch. And then let's take our switch. Where is our switch? There you go. So, okay. I just want to check that the size is correct. So let's drag in the BP switch in. And yeah, that looks correct to me. Yeah. What I want to do actually is I'm going to get a new scene root. So this default scene root comes with this ugly uh, billboard you can see here which can be useful, but in our case, we don't need it. So select scene and call it root, and then drop this to make it the new root. And you can see that that goes away, and we just have the switch. Another thing I want to do is go into side view. I'm going to zoom in here, and I want to lift this up. I don't know how many units, just so it sits flush. So let's see, 0.5 to 0.6. Yeah, maybe it's 0.6. Let's compile and save. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to just drag another. There you go. Delete that. And then I'm going to unpilot this and see if. Okay, the camera movement is way too fast. So go in here and then I completely forgot how you change the speed of the camera. I thought it was here. Never mind. Yeah. Okay, so is that sitting flush on the ground? Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that and just go back into here. Now, I don't want to mess with the camera, so I'm going to right click here and then do transform and lock actor movement. So if I do this, it's not going to mess up the view. Save. So that looks okay to me. I'm going to go back into the perspective view here. Yeah, it's like this. Yeah, so I'm going to slow it down. There you go. You use the WASD keys, by the way, if you didn't know. So this, obviously, we're going to rotate within its x-axis, so like that. I think it was 25 degrees maximum both ways, OK? So let me just see 25. I'm going to put the switch back in. Oh, crap, my bad. Control Z that and then zero out the X. Yeah, and then somewhere here, right? Five. Okay. So it seems like it's correct. Okay, there you go. So positive 25 is the off position. And then if we go to minus 25, that's the on position. So we need to keep that in mind. So let's make a variable that is going to be saving the position of our switch. So I think it was called switch on. I mean, we should probably check that diagram. OK, so yes, indeed, it says switch on. So we can call it that. And it's called switch toggle. So that was incorrect, switch toggle. OK, so switch on, we will default to false which is fine. So if you want to set its default value, you need to compile when you make a new variable. 
So it defaults to off, so we need to put it at 25. That's off, considered off, okay. And what we're gonna do is basically take this, get switch on, and then what do we do? We need to get its inverse of the value, so not Boolean. So this means that if this was tr false, this output is going to be true. And now we need to set this. Okay, so what, what is this doing? Basically inverting the value, okay? So we invert the value, and then what I'm going to do is, okay, we're going to take the switch, and then we're going to set its relative rotation. Remember, relative rotation is within this blueprint's coordinate system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this value so we get the individual axis, and I want to mess with the x-axis, right? Yep. So the x-axis, and I'm going to use something called select utilities, like this. Okay, and then when you connect this, so if the switch on value is false, which means it is off, it's 25 degrees rotation, and if it's on, it's minus 25. And to simulate it, we can do something like this. So go and do event begin play. And what I'm going to do is call switch toggle. And then give it a delay of like, I don't know, 0.5 seconds. And do this. And then to preview it within, inside of the blueprint editor, you just compile, save, and then do simulate. There you go. That is what we're going to do for now. That's uh, as complex as we're going to get. Uh, and the fancy animations are going to be later. Okay, let's make this stuff look a little more fancy. I'm going to disable simulation. Switch base. Show engine content again. And the base, we can keep it this kind of thing here. The switch, maybe you can use the orange one, right? Let's search for basic. There you go. Save this. Right, I just forgot something about the mouse interaction. So when, you, when you're doing a line trace, what is required is that the mesh needs to have a collision mesh, which it doesn't have. So click on SM switch, and you can show it's simple collision, you see there's nothing there. So we need to add in a box collision. So that gives us the collision mesh. Okay, so I'm going to select this and try to scale it down a little bit. Oh, this is the camera speed, my bad. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And where is this? Is it here? Yeah. Do something a lot smaller and then let's try to get, yeah, something like that. I think I'm happy with that, so save that. And then it's very hard to see. I'm just gonna just turn around the lights. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about with the shadows? You can see that the switch doesn't have any shadows because it's, it's too small. But I would guess if we zoom in enough, see? Okay, I wasn't thinking about that. So to fix this issue, I'm going to try to bump up the shadows to epic. See if that fixes it. It is not doing it. Let's disable the lock. I'm going to see, try to zoom in. Oh, wow, we have to get in quite close, eh? Okay, so let's just zoom in so we can actually see the shadow over the switch. And then that's going to change our focus settings. So I'm going to redo it again here. And I think the bokeh is too much. So I'm going to just do one here. Let's save this. Okay. And then we have this working now, which is fine. Yep. And then mouse click. We are good. So let's test it then.
Uh, we should be able to test it now. And so let's go into the blueprint and drag in our mouse click blueprint. I'm going to zero it out. And in order to receive inputs for this blueprint, you know, we have this, yes, but we need to tell it in this scene that, hey, it can receive inputs from the player controller. So auto receive input to player zero. That's the player zero with the, as you can see here, index zero. So that's the default index. Okay, fingers crossed. We're gonna run this. If I click, oh, there you go, you see that? That's the trace debug which is being drawn. So that's good to know that it's working. Uh, let's just do none for this one. And then let's do this, boom. Okay, so obviously we can't see the mouse and that's because we haven't set the variable. And so copy this from the uh, level blueprint, okay? And then you just do show mouse cursor set to true. Set to true and the compile and save. Okay, when I run it, uh, we'll see that I can click and that goes off, on, off, on. And if you want to see that it's actually doing it, you can just take this and then do a print string. And I like to do like half a second and do in string like that. And just make it red. So do that. Sorry, one, okay. Complete. True, that's on, that's off, on, off, on, off. There you go. Oh, do you see that? Okay. Yeah, no, the shed is still there, so it's fine. All right, that wraps up the switch. Once again, 10 minutes just to work on something simple. And I think you're getting the theme right now, right? It can get a little bit boring because it lacks the immediacy of a tool like Touch Designer but I think there is a real value into mastering kind of low level technical skills because you're not limited just to work on installations because in Unreal Engine, you can really get into other fields like virtual production or archivist or automotive or video games, right? And those skills that you learn, they can really be translated into these different fields. And so that gives you a lot of, you know, I would say flexibility that other tools might not give you, right? And so look, if you're still determined to learn and if you want to keep learning, click on the next video.